So hello and welcome to Arts Worcester's first ever virtual artist talk. I'm Kate Rasha, assistant director here at Arts Worcester, and I'm joined today by artist Gloria Gogan. Hi, Gloria. Hi, how are you? Good, thanks. So before we get going, um, I'd just like to thank everyone who is tuning in with us today. We are excited to be able to bring you this content in this format and grateful that you're along for the ride as we navigate this new normal. So thanks for being here with us today, everyone. Uh, Gloria is an accomplished colored pencil artist who brings her own personal style to the long tradition of botanical illustration. Her solo exhibition, Botanical Dreams, is currently installed at the Hanover Theater and on view at our website, artsworcester.org, and our social media pages. You can find us at Arts Worcester on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Today, I'm gonna to be talking with Gloria about the works in this show, her artistic process, and where she gets inspiration for these pieces. Um, so again, welcome, Gloria. Thank you so much for being here. Um, can you give us a quick introduction to this exhibition? So, um, yeah, sure. This exhibition was, um, it's a group of pieces of artwork, pure botanical and botanical in style, the traditional botanical style. And uh, I executed them over approximately two years time. They're all fairly local images too, as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a style that I work in. Um, I like it unto itself. And I also enjoy using it as pieces that go into other types of work. So as studies of plants and things that go into other works I do. So my first question is why botanical illustrations and how did you first come to this genre of work? It's very interesting and, and you probably hear things like this, but as a child, young, I um, discovered botany. And one of the exercises I did, I had to do when I was young was to go out and collect wild plants. And at the same time, I loved to draw. So having that come together was fairly easy, but it didn't happen until much later in life when I found um, a botanical uh, drawing class, actually, um, at uh, Tower Hill Botanic Garden. Are there <clears throat> other artists or styles that you are inspired by? Well, you know, uh, most people know that Botanical art is a very long-standing art. It's been out there for, for many, many, many years. In fact, you see, um, you see botanical art in Egyptian wall paintings. They're, they drew plants. So um, to catalog plants is a very old art form. I really enjoy the Flemish side of that, the style of Flemish painters who did um, all the tulips in that era um, of doing still lives with vases and flowers and uh, sort of bugs and butterflies and things in it. And it's a tradition that was often um, used with a black background. So I do have um, a piece, not in this show, uh, called Summer in Black. And that piece is particularly in that Flemish style of um, botanical art with butterflies in it and a black background. So in the, in the traditional style, I, I was um, inspired by a painting that's in the Worcester Art Museum of two Flemish painters that work together in something called uh, a garland of flowers with the education of the Virgin. And so um, this is like kind of my rendition of that, but French. A lot of botanical art is most traditionally done in watercolor or gouache, um, but you use colored pencils for yours. Um, yeah. Can you tell us why that is and if there's anything that you find particularly challenging or exciting about using this medium? Yes, it, traditionally watercolor or, uh, or gouache, uh, some people paint in oils. I really like color pencils. It was something, again, that I started when I was very, very young in my teens, working in color pencils, and people didn't really do that. And I continued on through the years. And so because I've been working at it so long, I've, been, I've developed a technique that is painterly in style with the pencils. I like them because I have more control. I like the exacting detail of working with them. I have more control over a pencil. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Also, it's a wonderful thing to put a pack of pencils, eraser, and some things in and go anywhere. So, you know, I can just pack up really, really easily and take off and go into the woods and sketch something and, you know, really work on it and put some color to it that, that um, doesn't require a, a lot of materials and things. Absolutely. It's very portable. How do you find and how do you choose the specimen um, that you do draw? And do these specific plants have any particular meaning for you personally? Well, yes, and I, I do, I pick plants for a lot of different reasons. Um, some are, there, there are flowers that remind me of places, things, people. Um, uh, for instance, I have a piece of work in the show of um, lady slippers. When I was a kid, they were all over the woods in our backyard, and so, I wanted to put those out there as an image because they, that's, they're like, they come from me. That's my roots, where I was, where I started, you know, a real interest in botanical art mm -hmm. was finding lady slippers wild in the woods in our backyard. Um, there are all kinds of plants that I see that remind me of places and things. Some people take snapshots when they go on vacation. I sketch plants, particular plants that I find in places, and then I take photographs of them, and I work using both. Can you talk a little bit more about the process uh, behind making these drawings? Do you, do you make studies for each piece? Um, how do they come about? Usually, it, it's, a, it's a very odd thing because I usually am a year behind what I'm interested in because mm -hmm. I'll see something and then what I'll do is I'll, uh, if I like it, I might photograph it at that point, I might do a sketch, but I'll go back to it, especially if it's something in the wild, mm -hmm. I'll go back the following year and that's where I'll really do the work, I'll, I'll, I'll sketch different angles of it and then I'll take a lot of my own photographs of it close up at a distance in different lights and um, that's for plant material that I don't want to disturb. So would you say your um, making these drawings takes place sort of equal parts inside your studio and out um, sort of in the wild as it were? It, yeah absolutely. I The beginning parts of it are out in the wild. The beginning parts of it are always um, something that happens outdoors mm -hmm. and then the the finishing end of it you know i bring it inside right um to put the real depth and color i may do a little bit of color outside but the real depth of that happens in the studio um, yeah. there are a few pieces in this exhibition really beautiful works um, that depict a plant's full life cycle can you talk a little bit about those pieces because they're um, different than most of the other ones in the show i have a few pieces uh the one I would talk about is this one, the um, blueberries. And so uh, these happen to be in my yard. So uh, what you're looking at here is on the far right, the little white flowers are what opens up in the spring before the blueberries start. And there's, there's some dew on that. And what I did is I went out and started doing sketches and photographs at the various seasons and stages of them. So as you go from the right hand corner down and you see the berries with the little green berries on them too, partially ripe, a few coming about, you know, different sort of, I would say more um, like late June, July, and then in full bloom August, the upper left hand one, where you have berries that are completely ripe and some of the bugs have starting, started to get to some of the leaves on them because they've been out there so long. And then down in the lower left-hand corner, um, obviously the autumn leaves. Mm -hmm. And so it shows just about the complete cycle of a blueberry from bloom you know, to fading in the fall foliage. Right. Speaking of life cycles, how mm -hmm. do you feel about the tradition of botanical drawing in relation to climate change? Um, does the genre feel any different to you knowing that life cycles and locations of some of these plants might be under change? 
Yes, it, and it and it's an important um, it's an important statement. So botanical artists have always been the art photographers and catalogers of plants. So there's a scientific aspect as well as an art aspect to that work. And so we've always been the people who held the images and memories of plants that um, people years ago, like way back before photography, they actually would show plants that people may never see because they may, ne may never travel out to do that, where now you're looking at photographs for that. It's very nice. One of the uh, projects that I've always wanted to do is to look at some of the indigenous plants to New England. It would be a shame to see some of these things go by the wayside, but we all know that's true because, you know, as urban sprawl happens, mm -hmm. this stuff just gets completely, you know, mowed under. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I look at it, it, it's nice to, it's nice to catalog things that I see that are very interesting to me. And I, I think that people who do this sort of work, I mean, I have a lot of respect for people who go out there and seek out plants that are rare so that they can, just like animals that are going extinct so that they can catalog that in case it's gone someday. Yes. Some of your other drawings, some of which we've exhibited um, at Arts Worcester, uh, feature different colored backgrounds or abstract backgrounds. How do you view those works in relation to the ones in this exhibit, which are mostly placed within a white negative space? In traditional botanical drawing, there's that negative space in the background. It's traditional. It's meant to highlight the aspects of the plants, the little tiny parts and seeds and, and things in it. Um, I use these botanical drawings as a basis for this type of work. Mm -hmm. So where this type of work may have been um, in a traditional sense, if I were to do it, just a branch with a few kumquats, these are kumquats on it, this is the full view from my eye as if I was using my eye as a camera to look at the plant. And another thing I do, which is kind of breaking the rules, it's, it's um, <laughs> I work right to the end of the paper, which that anybody will tell you, you should always leave a space for framing and matting and everything, but I work right to the edge. I like it, it's almost a wallpaper effect that it has. Mm -hmm. Um, in the drawing. How long does something like that take you uh, compared to one of the other pieces in, in the white negative space? Oh, uh, it probably it's three times longer. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's a very long process. So like if we look at the lady slipper one, that's probably 30 to 40 hours. Wow. If, if you look at the life cycle blueberries, because it's four separate images, that's going to take a lot more time. Mm -hmm. And I, I would say this is probably more like 120 hours. Wow. You were uh, pretty busy over the last year putting 14 images together oh, uh, for your yeah. exhibition. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. And, it, you know, it taught me a lot. I always work on something. So, but yeah, more leisurely, I'd say, you know, but this, um, you have a deadline. So it teaches me a lot. And to, to be honest with you, um, I got a lot faster. I started to get a lot faster at it because it's just, um, it, it, when you practice that much, when you do that much, you know, it, it improves. So, yeah. Just one last question for you, Gloria. Uh, what are you working on next? I'm going to do a series of trilliums from um, Garden in the Woods. Now, they hold one of the most extensive catalogs of trilliums on the East Coast. I am also working on a seasonal set. So I have half of that um, done. Uh, of a, a fall, a winter, a summer, a spring. That and the next thing also is landscapes. I'm going to move from plants to landscapes, try my hand at it.
we can't wait to see all these things when you're done with them. So thank you again, Gloria, so much for taking the time to join us today. Um, thanks also to our friends at the Hanover Theater for helping make this exhibition possible um, and to all our friends and followers out there uh, for tuning in. If you do have questions for Gloria or for us, feel free to leave them in the comments on our social media pages, or you can send an email to info at artsworcester.org and we'll be happy to answer those for you there. To see Gloria's exhibition in its entirety, as well as the images that you saw um, in this talk, you can visit our website, artsworcester.org and click on at the Hanover. So thanks once again, everyone, and we'll see you next time.